The Sonoran pronghorn is a mythic-looking creature on the verge of disappearing from our landscape. To aid in their recovery, a captive breeding program has been taking place out here in the vast desert wilderness of southwestern Arizona. And for some of these pronghorn, today is graduation day. We're uh, happy to release some of the animals that we've been raising in the captive breeding pen. Mm -hmm. And our hopes are to release nearly 30 pronghorn this year back into the wild. And the pronghorn were brought from Mexico and a few from the Arizona population. They've been uh, crossbred over the last several years. And now we have uh, excess animals that we want to return to the wild. Okay, we're going to go to the other side. And we're going to catch them on the other side, so let's take a bag of everything we're going to need. Whether it be the setup is simple enough. The biologists have been feeding the pronghorn in these small circular corrals called bomas for months, letting them come and go freely. Then one December morning, the gates banged shut. The bomas are divided into three sections, so a few animals at a time can be isolated into one pen then a half dozen determined people with a net go in, push the animals into a narrow space, and then catch them. You're going to have to take our word for it. As the dust settles, a team of handlers, or muggers as they are called, brings each animal out. Stop right here. As each animal comes out of the boma, its individual needs are assessed and how it's going to be handled is determined basically by where it's going. Some animals are going to be helicoptered to new locations, other animals will be trailered and each treatment is different. Buck that way. Who's with this one? Need a, need a vet on this one? The scene resembles something out of a mash unit triage area with four veterinarians, their technicians, and biologists quickly going to work. As a general rule, we triage each animal that comes out and we decide what they need immediately. Each animal, irregardless of where it's going, is given antibiotics, anti-inflammatory medication, pain medication, vitamins, minerals. We draw blood on each animal as a means of determining not only the health of the individual but the health of the entire group. We want to make sure that these animals are given every chance to not only survive but thrive once we release them out into the desert. What we're doing is we're inducing this animal under anesthesia. It's going to be one of the does that's going to be transported out to the far end of the recovery area. So I'm giving her a general anesthetic and she's going to get real sleepy here in a minute. We're going to set an IV catheter uh, to maintain her, and then we'll collar her and ear tag her before she's released out, in the, out on the range. We have a very well-oiled veterinary team, and everybody knows their jobs. So depending on how the animal was going to be uh, processed determined which veterinarian it went to. Each veterinarian was equipped with the ability to not only monitor these animals once they were given sedatives and anxiolytics or even anesthetics, uh, but they were also equipped to provide first aid and medical care to the animals if we all got separated. The veterinary team has, has had extensive training in the handling of Sonoran pronghorn antelope and not just the veterinarians but our technicians as well. She's stable, she's breathing, we're going to put some machines on that go beep. Our goal is to keep her temperature stable, keep her under anesthesia, and uh, make sure she's well oxygenated. The pronghorn are blindfolded to help calm them down. They have keen vision with eyes about the same size as an elephant's, making their eyesight and speed their main defense against predators. The muggers hold them off the ground to avoid their powerful kicks and pour water over them to keep them cool. The Sonoran pronghorn is a smaller subspecies of the American pronghorn found on the grasslands in northern Arizona. It is the fastest land animal in North America and can clock speeds up to 60 miles per hour. But it hasn't been able to outrun its loss of habitat, and when the herd dwindled to about 100 animals in 1967, it was placed on the endangered species list. Then the devastating drought of 2002 hit, and the animal's numbers crashed to only about 20 survivors. We began uh, captive breeding uh, to help stabilize the population 
because of a severe decline in numbers that occurred in 2002. A horrible drought uh, removed about 80% of the wild population in Arizona. So that began uh, the, the impetus for this program to, to help stabilize the, the wild population. The Arizona Game and Fish Department and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service constructed this one-mile square pen in 2003 to give the animals an opportunity to recover. As the pronghorn numbers rose, the first two were released back into the wild in 2007. There are only three Sonoran pronghorn populations in the world, two in northern Mexico and this one in southern Arizona. They used to range as far north as where Interstate 10 now crosses into the state and as far west as the Colorado River, but they were squeezed down of their home range in the early 20th century. Now, the U.S. herd lives primarily on the Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuge near Ajo, an 860,000 acre stretch of desert wilderness managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So medically speaking, working with Sonoran pronghorn is a dichotomy and reasonableness all by itself. Neoplasticine throwbacks, we're literally working with Ice Age animals in the desert. And that in itself has its own set of problems. So we want them sternal, we want their chins down. And um, let me know if anyone's moving and I'm gonna make them go back to where they are happier, all right? The Sonoran pronghorn being handled here will be either released back into the breeding pen or sedated and then trailered to a recovery pen and released the next day. A few were anesthetized and driven in the back of a pickup truck to a waiting helicopter where they were flown to a more remote location hoping to increase their range. Sometimes though, the high-strung pronghorn don't always react the way that the vets and biologists predict they will. Holy Hang it, just rustle him down, bring him down. Okay, man, you got him. Good, everyone on top of him. I don't care how it works. I got it. That was kind of, that's sporty. All right. yeah. One of the things that we also found out about pronghorn over these years of research is that some of them just don't believe in drugs. We used a combination of medications that were used in desert pronghorn in other locations. However, our snoring pronghorn didn't seem to respond in a predictable manner. We're just lucky that they decide to wake up on the ground rather than in the helicopter. The second day of the operation began early, as did the first. With the full moon setting and the sun on the rise, the medical teams were already in place, using tailgates as a makeshift field hospital to ready their supplies for the day's work. Again, they will make sense out of seeming chaos as they work to give the Sonoran pronghorn a new foothold in the west. Even the helicopter transport would go smoothly on this day. All in all, about 40 pronghorn were captured, and of those, 23 were released, which should bring the number of pronghorn in the wild to about 90. The next step is to increase the pronghorn's range, perhaps in the Kofa National Wildlife Refuge in Yuma County and parts of the Barium Goldwater Range east of Arizona 85. Until then, the work will continue to help the population within Cabeza Prieta grow and expand. I'm a wildlife and conservation medicine veterinarian because I believe that there is a need for at least some level of medicine in the ultimate conservation of, of our wild species and particularly our, our endangered species like the Sonoran pronghorn. I personally find a great deal of satisfaction working okay. on those animals that don't nice. normally have vets available and working for them.